Tom Sawyer, Chapter 10, Lost. Tom had to find Joe's gold. Joe said that he was stashing the loot in number two. That probably was a room in the town tavern. Tom asked Huck to watch the tavern. If Joe or his friend left the place, Huck could follow them and find out if the loot was hidden someplace else. Huck did just as Tom said. At ten o'clock, two men stepped out of the tavern. One was carrying a bundle under his arm. It was Injun Joe and the man with the scar. Huck followed as quietly as a cat. The men walked up River Street for three blocks. Then they headed for Cardiff Hill. They stopped in the woods outside the Widow Douglas's house. Huck hid behind a large elm tree. There's a light in her place, said Joe. She's got company. No matter. I'm going to get that Widow Douglas. Her husband got me in trouble many times. I aim to pay her back, and I'm willing to wait. I'll kill her if I have to. Huck didn't wait a minute. He raced past the rock quarry to Mr. Jones's house. He banged on the door. Mr. Jones opened the window. Who's banging, he said. What do you want? It's Huckleberry Finn. Quick, let me in. That name doesn't open many doors around here, said Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones thought Huck was a loafer and a good-for-nothing, but he'd let him in anyway. Huck quickly told him what was happening at the Widow Douglas's house. Mr. Jo Mr. Jones grabbed a gun and ran to the widow's. Huck stayed behind a tree. Suddenly, there was a gunshot. Holt, Huck bolted like a jackrabbit. He ran away as fast as his legs could carry him. The next day, Huck knocked at Mr. Jones's door again. Who's there? Huck's scared voice whispered, Please let me in. It's Huck Finn. Now that's a name that can open this door night or day, replied Mr. Jones. Enter, lad, and welcome. I was awful scared last night, said Huck. I took off at the gun blast, and I didn't stop running for three miles. Poor lad, you do look like you've had a hard night, replied Mr. Mr. Jones. Then he told Huck what had happened. The gunshot scared them. They took off, but they dropped something. I went back with a lamp and found it. What was it? Huck asked nervously. He hoped it wasn't the treasure. Burglar's tools, replied Mr. Jones. Huck gave a sigh of relief. I'm telling the widow you saved your life, said Mr. Jones. Oh, please don't, begged Huck. I don't want anyone to know. Huck was afraid that Joe would find out who gave the warning. Then Huck would really be in trouble. Huck couldn't wait to tell Tom about his adventure. Tom had gone on a picnic with Becky and a large party of friends, but Tom and Becky never came back. They were supposed to have spent the night at Mrs. Harper's. After church, Aunt Polly and Mrs. Thatcher found Mrs. Harper. My young nephew's missing, said Aunt Polly. He mentioned something about spending the night at your house, but he didn't show up for church. And my Becky must really be tired if she's still sleeping at your place, added Mrs. Thar Mrs. Thatcher. But Mrs. Harper didn't know where the children were. Neither Tom nor Becky had slept over at her house. Joe Harper was standing next to his mother. Have you seen my Tom, Joe? asked Aunt Polly. No, ma'am, replied Joe. Joe couldn't remember when he last saw Tom and Becky. A ferry boat had taken the party to a spot a few miles down the Mississippi River. After the picnic, the group had played games and explored MacDougall's cave. Then the ferry took them back home. Joe thought Becky and Tom were on the ferry. One of the older boys came over. I didn't see them on the ferry coming home, he said, and if they weren't on the ferry, then they must still be in the cave. Aunt Polly and Mrs. Thatcher broke down crying. The awful news spread fast. In half an hour, 200 men were at MacDougall's cave. They brought along food and a large supply of candles. They searched and searched the cave, but they didn't find Tom and Becky. Tom and Becky were lost in the cave. They had talked and walked without looking where they were going. When it was time to meet the others, they couldn't find their way back. Oh, Tom, we didn't mark our trail, cried Becky. Tom was scared. He knew he didn't know the way out. There were too many tunnels in the cave. The passages are all mixed up, Becky, said Tom. I'm not sure how long we'll be stuck here. We better burn one candle and save the other for later. We never, never will get out of this awful place, cried Becky. We'll die here. The children sat down. The short candle glowed. 
Bats flew through the shadows the light made. Becky was tired from fear and soon fell asleep. Tom listened to the dripping of water in the cave. He watched Becky's face. He didn't know what to do. How would they ever find their way home?